Let's take a look at a Chinese aroma dispersion chemical atmospheric pollutant type unit. Let me show you this working to start off with, just so you know what it's about. If I put this black surface down here and I press the button on here until it starts, you will see that there is a fine haze blowing out and that haze is oil based and contains aromas and stinks. And bizarrely, the unit has an option to just be running absolutely continuously pumping out oil into your ear. Lovely. When it arrived, and you did when you ordered it, you had an option of the different chemical aromas. And it's interesting that the wick uh, was supplied separately, if I recall correctly, with a screw-on lid, um, and it did not fit into this. The only way I could fit it in was to carefully keep filing this down smaller and smaller until it finally screwed in. Better than the other unit I got round about the same time that uh, it just, you couldn't find the bottle. It came without a bottle and uh, you couldn't find the bottles for it at all. What an odd thing to sell. Anyway, here it is. I don't see any obvious screws. Let's open it up. Oh, I should mention it's rechargeable and has various power level of output modes, including the aforementioned full-on one. Let's try and get this apart. Oh, that is a very tight case. Very tight indeed. Have they ultrasonically welded this together? Hopefully not. That's going to be very destructive. This is not looking very easy to open up. Oh, the rain has just started smashing down outside. Good. Oh, wait, no, hold on, hold on. I think I've got in here. No, I've just chipped the plastic. That's lovely. It's not going to be quite the same by the time I've finished. Uh, right, tell you what, I'm going to pause while I try and open this because it's clear that it's going to take a lot of effort to actually get this apart. Maybe it's just clipped together super tightly. One moment, please. Ow, ow, ow. Yes, it was glued. Very finger-pinching. It's got a doubly-sized lithium cell. And it's got the little uh, emitter up here, which should just sit in, probably. With its little spring. Watch its little spring ping. Uh, that provides pressure down onto the piezoelectric disc with the insulator. Let me zoom down this. Oh, they've stuck the, the little insulating ring onto it. It's like a little foam pad. Um, so that pushes down with the spring pressure so that when you insert the bottle of aroma chemical into it, it just pushes up against that disc against the spring just to make sure it sits evenly across the top of the, the aroma bottle. Oh, there's a little plug for the... Uh, for the button, not button cell, the lithium cell. And then there is the circuitry itself, which is very minimalist. Mm, I see a USB port. I see what I'm going to guess is the charge chip. I see a little tiny microcontroller for controlling this, the MOSFET and the inductor. It's time to take a picture and take a look at this. Oh, it's single-sided as well. Very, very good. One moment, please. And resume. The unit has been put back together, relatively speaking, with tie wraps, and it does work. Let's take a look at the circuit board. So I shall zoom down. And we've got the USB charge port at this side. I clipped it off a little bit just so we could get in closer on the circuit board. There is a 4054 charge control chip with a 2K programming resistor, which will be about 500 milliamps. We've got the battery connector. We've got the Two wires going off to the piezoelectric transducer for the atomization. We've got what I'd call an inductor. It's marked L1, but it's really a little transformer. And I'll show you that in the drawings. But it's got a con positive and it's got a, a small number of heavy turns for the uh, switch winding. And then it's got the high voltage winding leading to the transducer just to give it extra excursion. that gives it the ability to atomize the liquid. There is the amazing little microcontroller, little six pin unit with a, a positive and negative. It's only got, that is an RGB LED, but it's only got control over the blue and green LEDs in it. However, the red LED is actually controlled from this chip directly via this resistor. And it just means it can light the red LED in that, uh, as use one LED for all the indications. The switch has come to the zero volt rail and it goes to one input. Uh, there's the two outputs going to the LED and there's a little decoupling capacitor in the vicinity of the chip for stability. A MOSFET S2 uh, for switching the, the transformer and then a pull down resistor and then the output of from the chip. I'm guessing the chip can't really drive significant loads uh, because there's no resistors. So it's a current limited outputs just for logic level stuff. And that's fine for switching LEDs and also 
uh, driving the MOSFET. Anything else on here? Not much. It's a very basic design, but it's very functional. Let's look at the schematic and trace it through. A little bit closer. Here's the incoming USB supply. It has a decoupling capacitor across it, which I measured in circuit around about 600 nanofarad. So let's say one microfarad. Uh, it goes to the 4054B chip. That chip also is the negative. It's got the output to the battery, the lithium cell. I'm guessing that the under charge protection is probably the microcontroller may detect a threshold voltage and turn off when it detects the voltage going too low. There's a lot packed into these little microcontrollers these days. There's a 2K programming resistor, just the usual arrangement, as if this was a uh, LTH7 or whatever. It's just a generic copycat sort of uh, chip. Then there's a decoupling capacitor close to the chip. Uh, the microcontroller itself, it's got the button going down to the zero volt rail. It's got its connection to the negative. Um, it has the output to drive the MOSFET with the pull down resistor just to make sure it stays off when the chip is unstable or just turned off. Uh, if it's gone, the voltage has gone too low. And that MOSFET then drives the small number turns in the primary and that couples across as a higher voltage in the secondary, which gives the piezoelectric disc in the end better excursion for pulsating backwards and forwards and uh, molecularizing the liquid. The three LEDs in the one package, uh, the red one's got its 1K resistor going to the this pin, which pulls down low when it's charging. And the green and blue are just straight to the chip. That is it. It's a very straightforward but functional design. Even the construction inside was very nice because the circuit board, if you look at the earlier part of the video, you'll see the circuit board is actually here. And it basically, at one end of the circuit board, it has the charge port. Well, I can show you in the actual thing here. I can show you. There's a charge port at one end. And the switch and the LED are at the other end. But because uh, that's all it's needed, effectively, charge port there. And the switch and LED are directly under here. So that this acts as the, uh, the indicator and the, the control button. I should make sure that's turned off so it's not running dry. Um... But that's it. Very functional design, just the wires going up to that little plastic assembly. It's very cheaply and easily made, but it works. Oh, another thing that's worth mentioning, the microcontroller will have its own internal oscillator, and I don't think there's any feedback really available from this, so it will just be running at a fine-tuned frequency for the, uh, the piezoelectric disc and the transformer just to basically hit their perfect frequency that it produces the best results and that will then be locked into the software. Interesting design. Very basic, very simple, but very functional. Quite neat.